Hi, I'm Paul Johnston and welcome to Two Wheels. And on this week's show, we send Wayne down to Donington Park to visit the annual Trade Expo. It is a very strict trade-only show, but Wayne managed to sneak in with a Two Wheels camera crew to bring us a sneak preview of some of the goodies we're likely to find on the dealer's shelves this year. But first, I've been taking a look at the bike which Honda are hoping will take them right back to the very top of the sports bike tree. Now, if you asked somebody who knew absolutely nothing at all about motorcycles to name you a couple, they'd probably say, yeah, one of them big American things, them big fancy custom things with all the chrome, what they're called, um, Harley Davidson, yeah, they'd probably say that. Or they might say, what about one of them racy Japanese things, you know, them, them really fast things, what they're called? That's it, a Honda Fireblade. And this is the very latest 2002 version of Honda's flagship sports bike, the CBR954RR Fireblade. The machine, which since its launch 10 years ago, has become a biking icon. Breathtaking performance with handling to match, and as much style and street cred as you'll ever need. Now if you were listening very carefully then, you'll have noticed that I called it the CBR954. That's because this engine has now grown by 25cc from last year's model, we're now up to 954cc. So therefore it's simply a 2001 model that's been bored out a bit and they've stuck some new bodywork on it. Um, no, definitely no, big big no. This new Fireblade is so much more than that. Yes, the motor's been bored out by one millimetre, but that's only a tiny part of the story. Compression has been increased whilst friction within the engine has been reduced. The pistons, despite being larger in diameter, now have shorter skirts and are actually lighter than those used in last year's model. Single exhaust valve springs are now used in place of the old double springs, which again has reduced weight, and this also helps to make the engine rev quicker. The fuel injection has been improved and it's been remapped with each injector now having 12 laser drilled holes to give finer fuel atomization, and it helps to give a smoother throttle response with more efficient combustion. So I think after all that technical blurb there, we've established now that this is a pretty high-tech machine, certainly as far as the engine is concerned. But there's lots and lots of other changes on the bike. Some of them are fairly obvious. For example, this swing arm, look at this racing style swing arm. Beautiful thing, it's a work of art, that. That is actually lighter than the one that they used last year, but somehow they've managed to make it stiffer and stronger. Other changes are not so obvious. Little things like the spring on the rear shock, would you believe that that is actually lighter than before? These wheels are now lighter. The frame looks to be pretty much the same to me. It seems like it's been beefed up a little bit up at the headstock. And there's a slight revision to the brackets at the back of the frame here to accommodate this new seat and tail unit, which is actually narrower than before. And I don't like to state the obvious, but I'm sure you've already noticed that the frame is now black. So everything's lighter for 2002, but by how much? Well, allow me to give you some comparisons. Suzuki's GSX-R1000 weighs in at 170 kilos. Yamaha's new R1 is 174 kilograms. This new Fireblade tips the scales at just 168 kilograms, which is just a fraction lighter than Honda's own CBR600 Sport. Quite incredible. By now I should be uh, reaching some kind of conclusion and I should be sort of wrapping up this little feature on the new Fireblade. But you know what? It gives me such a buzz to ride it. It's so addictive, this. It is a, a great bike to ride. Then I think I'll go and do some more. I'll take it for another spin and I'll tell you what I really think about it later on. I'll just take the glass back. Regular viewers of Two Wheels will know that every year we visit the Dealer Motorcycle Trade Expo. And this is indeed the 2002 version. So we thought we'd bring to you some of the new products that the dealers will indeed see and sell to you during the course of the year. But you have to be a dealer, it's trade only. You need a pass like these and they register them to make sure we get no bogus people coming in and finding out all the little things that the trade don't want you out there to know. But we thought we'd bring you some of the new things before they're on the street, on the shop shelf. So we will do that. I've got my official pass. Sue, I really don't know what they're trying to say. So let's go inside and have a look.
Now the show lasts three days, and during that three days, the dealers will come along and they can buy absolutely everything. Look at this, in this case, scooters and motorcycles. Over here, they sell bits and pieces, spare parts, batteries, and so on and so forth. On this side, we've got an oil company, and it looks like they're serving drinks during the day. <laughs> we might visit them later. Back over here, more spare parts and performance bits and pieces for scooters and so on. And then, more performance bits and pieces with fancy exhaust systems and brakes and so on. But that's not all, because obviously, we all want to have a look at the gear the clothing you wear, the helmets and the boots, and there are a load of exhibitors selling those, and we'll go and see some of those now. Can I uh, offer you a, a mint, sir, madam? That's the sort of introduction, possibly a little bit more exciting, that they will offer to a dealer as they walk by, to entice them onto the stand. And then when they get them on the stand, they're going to offer them the products that the importing distributor is going to sell to them, hopefully, if they take them on board. I mean, this company, Danny Sport, it's a British-based company, get the products made all over the world. And here we have a nice one-piece suit. We've got some textile gear here, it's quite stylish. And then some new stuff that they're showing off for 2002. And then the trader may, may like it, may indeed wish to order some in advance for the rest of the year. So then, he would obviously get given a brochure and in the brochure he's shown all the stuff he's seen with some prices and he places his order if the dealer or the trader is very very lucky he gets an order and then they offer any assistance that might be required so can you offer me some help madam please I wish to know some prices excuse me I wish you see you can't always get good staff you're quite ignorant really aren't you and it's a nice suit but I'm not honestly sure about the shoes on a motorcycle As if I know what I'm doing, I haven't got a flipping clue. You know, the dealers don't necessarily come to these uh, trade shows to buy things to sell to you. No, they come and buy equipment to use in their workshops. And this, well, this is about as fancy as you get, a fancy diagnostic piece of equipment. But it's not the sort of thing that attracts you to come onto a stand, is it really? Because it's ugly. So they need something beautiful and shapely, like this MV Augusta. Flaming Addy. I tell you what, an MV Augusta is a piece of... Art, it's a work of art in its own right. And then some bright spark goes and bolts on as many bits and pieces he can find. He paints and polishes everything he can see and produces this. It is beautiful. So no wonder they put this on display because people will spot it and think, I'll have a look. And then they see all the workshop equipment. Talking about the workshop equipment, there's all sorts you can buy. There's these great huge ramps. There's tyre fitting pieces of equipment. They've even got another motorbike here that's rather impressive as well to attract them onto the stand. You can buy wheel balancing stuff. That's probably broke it. There's another fancy wheel balancing thing here. Another tyre fitting machine. I'm sure this is made and designed to collect the oil. Do, 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 do. And then of course there's the equipment you need in the workshop like compressors and these which are extractor fans. No, they're not the sort of thing you use. Look. This is the bridge. This is the captain speaking. Is that the engine room? Stick the kettle on, will you, cock? Well, you do get rather lonely, you know, when you're at these uh, trade shows on your own, you know. Um, what a lovely pair of uh, headlights, shiny headlights, for a custom bike. And that's what I've done. I've come to Custom Cruisers stand who sell all sorts of bolt-on accessories for every type of custom cruiser. Your Viragos, Intruders, Shadows, Vulcans, Harleys, Royal Stars, you name it, they do it. Even snakeskin seats, would you believe? Well, that's not all you'll find in snakeskin either, because some bright spark has decided to paint not a helmet, not a bike, but would you believe a blinking paddock stand in snakeskin? Oh, and it, it's lovely and smooth, it feels just like the real thing. Now this is something different, this is a lady's boot. We know it's a lady's boot because it comes with wings. <laughs> right, no, leave it, serious this, serious. This boot is different in many ways. Okay, it's specific for the ladies in this particular model. It's made by Daytona, which is a handcrafted German boot. It's Gore-Tex lined, so it's 100% waterproof. It's dead easy to get your leg in. When it's fastened up, it's really, really tight. But some ladies definitely have a difficulty in two counts. One of them is they have quite wide calves. So Daytona are very cleverly, in their wisdom, applied an extra piece of adjustment at the back here. So you fasten that to the correct position, bring up the flap and the Velcro holds it in place so you can have real wide calf fixture. 
And in addition to that, something that's hiding in there, hello, is something you can't see. It's a secret, and we don't want to tell anybody about it. But between you and me, it's special because there's an insole that gives you a one inch increase to raise your leg. Because one inch can mean an awful lot to somebody. With short legs, I mean. Well, we'll leave Wayne there for the time being to fight his way around this year's Trade Expo and there'll be more from him later. Also, after the break, there'll be more of Honda's new Fireblade. Welcome back to Two Wheels. Now we get lots of complaints, and I mean lots and lots of complaints saying, why won't we let Wayne play with a big bike? So, just for you people and for Wayne, this week we're going to let him loose with a great big powerful machine. Unfortunately though for him, it's on a TV screen. Sorry Wayne, it's the best we could do. He's done it to me again, hasn't he, that Paul Johnston fella, I tell you. He says, I'll get you a go on a super bike, on a bike that is awesome and will go around the racing circuit nearly all by itself. And he tells me we'll go to Donington Park, best racing circuit in the world in my eyes. Well, we have. Well, we brought it here instead. What we've done is we've come to a motorcycle shop in St Helens, planked ourselves down in these beautiful lounge seats. We've got a nice television on which we've got a games console fitted to it. And that's what we're doing. We're having a go on games. And there's loads of bike games available, like these. Motocross, off-road types, road racing games. Loads of different ones. And you can play them on various different game consoles. You've got all the new fancy ones that are out with the PlayStation 2, Xbox, Cube game. Oh, you name it, loads of different ones. They all link into the television. Of course, if you've got yourself a laptop or a PC at home, I believe you can play games on those as well. But what we've decided to do is pick a motocross one, an off-road one, and a road racing one, and get some customers that have come into the motorcycle shop here to have a look round and buy a bike, but grab them, sit them down in a chair, and let them have a go, and see what they think of the games, and how easy or how hard they are to play. Hard isn't the word for it. I used to think I was quick. I thought it was better than Alexandra Barros coming out of Goddard's, but proof of the pudding is, I ain't that good, to be honest. So I've got myself a candidate here, and this young gentleman, Neil, Neil Marsh, who I believe um, has indeed got uh, a game console at home and plays on them, but not the bike racing one, is that right? That's true, yeah, I've never played this game before. So, so how are you finding it then, as as you're a, a, a rookie, you might say, if you're a racer? It's pretty good, it's uh, addictive like, and there's <laughs> plenty, yeah. plenty of options on it. Um, I think you could get into it the more you played on it. Are, are you riding a bike at the moment? Um, I'm not. I have been riding one. Yeah. But, what, um, and you're in a bit of a state of limbo, I suppose, at the moment. So, um, are you treating yourself to something soon? Uh, I'm just looking at getting rid of the uh, car, really, to be honest, and right. getting the bike on a full-time basis. Do you, think, do you think this could be any help to what you buy, might be buying? Um, you make a you're not going to buy a GP bike, that's a definite. I don't think I'd want to be doing this on the road. Like. <laughs> Whoa, dirty rider, honestly. In respect to the various different games that you've played and things like that, how do you reckon fun factor and, and general enjoyment of the likes of this? Get into this a lot. You could. It's one of them, them ones that you just don't want to put down. Have you got a bike at the moment? Yeah. And what have you got? A speed fire. Speed fire, scoop. Yeah. So, a word of warning is now, don't be going home and practicing this on your speed fire because I don't think it's going to do quite what they're doing. Brian's been on one of these before, is that because you've got one at home? A console yeah. thing? He just doesn't let you on it? I just you're not that interested? No, I'm not really into games. I'm making an assumption here now, but I reckon the way you got on with this straight away and everything, I think while he's not looking, while he's out the swimming <laughs> baths or out on his speed <laughs> fight, you'll be uh, flicking the switch and playing on it, yeah? You've yeah, got the I bug, haven't so. you? I'll tell you what, you can have an awful lot of fun, and you know the great thing about it is, when they fall off on the screen, it doesn't hurt you. 
When you fall off in the real world, oof, it can hurt. That's one advantage. The other one is you can play on the things when it's raining and miserable weather outside. But when the weather's nice and you want to play on your bike, the kids are nagging you then. Dad, I want to play out, I want to do something. That's where these come into their own, even again, because get yourself a play console, get a game that is obviously bike related, of course, let the kids sit indoors, play on the game while you go out and ride your bike. Oh, it's perfect. What more could you ask for? But I must admit, playing on the consoles is not quite like the real thing. You imagine being able to jump from ramp to ramp over 50, 60 foot. Well, there are some fellas that do it, and they're barmy. In fact, watch this footage. Very often, people say to us, how can I get in touch with you guys at Two Wheels? I've got something you need to know about. It might be something bad. It might be something good. Somebody deserves a pat on the back. Or it might be something that you think we should feature on the show. Well, now it's dead simple, and this is how you do it. You can write to us at this address over here. Two Wheels, Men and Motors, Granada TV, Key Street, Manchester, M69EA. Or you can email us at this address. It's two wheels at Granada Media. Dot com. If it's two wheel related, then we want to know all about it. Ah, you've got up with me again, and believe me, this new Fireblade does take a bit of catching up with. It's a bloody quick bike. But I was talking before about the weight, or shall we say the lack of the weight, and I was saying that it's lighter now, 168 kilos, it's lighter than some 600cc bikes. And I'll tell you something, the first time I jumped on this, I thought, wow, it feels really small. It felt tiny almost, smaller than some 600cc's that I've been on recently. And really, it's a world apart from the old Fireblaze. Remember the old models with the big fat tanks and you had your arms stretched around the big fuel tank there. And that's another change on this. This fuel tank is a different shape. Obviously, you can see it's different styling, but it's now shorter at the back and the back end is actually lower. And what happens is you're now actually further forward. You sat further forward, so you're right over the headstock with all the weight on the front. And it really does make the bike feel quite small. Of course, distinctive features, the bodywork, all brand new bodywork, all this sort of edge styling, this very, very uh, ultra modern look now. I think it looks fantastic. Superb big headlamp cluster up there. I'm finishing off this very smart, very trendy stepped seat and tail unit. We've got some trendy LED tail lights. The Fireblade has to be one of the easiest bikes to ride fast. Maybe that's why insurance companies love them so much, but it is. Power delivery is just so smooth and seemingly endless, it just goes on and on. The handling is fantastic, it feels as flickable as a 600cc race rep, and so it should be, it's lighter than most. Suspension of course is fully adjustable, and apart from a slight modification to the rear, it's the same as last year's model. Of course, superb handling and performance is no use to anyone unless you've got decent brakes. And with 330mm twin discs up front, just about the biggest you'll find on any production bike, bringing the whole thing to a stop is never going to be a problem. You've no doubt gathered by now that I absolutely love this bike. I think it looks fantastic, it handles superb, and in terms of performance, this bike is capable of much more than I will ever need. And I think, if we were all honest, that's the case for 99.9% .9 of people who will ever get on a bike like this. In terms of out-and-out -out performance, well, Suzuki's GSX-R and Yamaha's new R1 will kick out more BHPs, but so what? What does that mean, and will we ever really be able to tell riding these in the real world? I doubt it. One thing that may make the blade slightly more popular than some of its competitors is that it does offer a certain degree of comfort. OK, you can get your head down, you can go real racetrack stuff if you want, but you can actually sit upright a little bit. It's not quite as focused as some of the other bikes in this class at the moment. So that's it. It's been around now for 10 years, the blade. And this engine now is the final development of the engine that we first saw in 1998. I say final development because now at 954 cc's, that is as far as it will go. 
If they bore it out anymore, the cylinders will meet in the middle. So if Honda wants to keep taking on the opposition, next time they'll need a new engine. Earlier on in the program, we were playing on some various different types of game consoles. You might like the idea of owning one of those. Well, you've got a chance of winning one. Free of charge, that is. All you've got to do is enter a competition on a website and you've got the chance of winning a PS2 and a free game as well. So you enter on the website, you want to know the web address. Well, it's www.menandmotors.co.uk forward slash fastbikes. And you've got to get your entry in by the end of March. Simple, innit? Just answer a few questions. Meanwhile, I'm continuing to play a game. Well, that's all from Two Wheels for this week. But on next week's show, I take a look at three different 600cc street bikes. Jeff chats with a man who knows all about grey imports and by popular request we've got some information for you about Supermoto track days.